Jetfire is something of a rarity among Generation 1 Transformers characters in that his original appearance isn't as ubiquitously regarded as his primary appearance as one would imagine, especially for a 1985 guy. While this has something to do with his scant attendance in the cartoon and Harmony Gold, I feel it's more due to Armada Jetfire eclipsing him. After his first episode, Jetfire was a regular member of Optimus Prime's crew, and was famous for becoming something akin to power armor for Prime, which would turn out to be a theme in the Unicron trilogy. Apparently, this feature of his character was so iconic that it became one of Jetfire's defining characteristics when he made his way onto the big screen in 2009. Of course, his Bayverse iteration also combined elements from his other appearances, such as his change of heart and subsequent faction switching from his Generation 1 debut, and his, uh, senility from, uh, well, I guess they had to do something to make him unique. Welcome to Kit Catastrophe. My name is Kit, and today we'll be taking a look at Transformers Studio Series Leader Class Jetfire. This figure was released in 2019 as part of Wave 2 of the Leader Assortment, and represents Jetfire's appearance in the 2009 film Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Sometimes I feel that Transformers really gets me. It's cool enough that there are tons of robots that turn into wicked supercars or tanks or shit like that, but then there's turning into one of the sexiest pieces of aerial machinery ever to grace God's blue skies. Jetfire's alternate mode of choice is the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird spy plane, which took its maiden voyage into the heavens in 1964, which would make Jetfire a baby boomer. Funny how that works out. The Blackbird is up there along with the Raptor, and the Nighthawk, and the Warthog, and quite a few others, as one of my all-time favorite planes, and from just one look at Jetfire, it's not hard to see why. This arrowhead dart is unlike pretty much anything you've ever seen, as if this jet were built for the sole purpose of skewering God himself, instead of the much more boring task of spying on the damn communists. There's just something so very elegant and iconic about the Blackbird, as if it's the pinnacle of what it means to fly. I love all the sculpted ridges flowing down the fuselage of this great bird, coupled with the thin red stripes on top. The nacelles are also wonderfully sculpted, smooth and curvy as can be, with tons of vent detailing and crisp skunk works tampographs on the stabilizers. The intake cones are made of rubber plastic so as to not gouge out the eyes of any young children, and as such they may be a bit bent out of shape out of the package. The long nose of the jet is striking and fierce with its flat, sharp chines and overall angry predisposition. The windows are painted a dull, dark bluish gray, and there are absolutely minuscule red warning tampographs surrounding the cockpit. The very tip of the nose is also made of rubber for similar stab prevention reasons. Now, as much as I like to gush about this alternate mode, there is one problem. The kibble... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jetfire's no exception when it comes to the affliction of underkibble that most Jet Transformers suffer from, but this takes the cake. Jetfire looks like he's wearing his alternate mode like a sleeping bag. Do you mind? I think you keep sleeping! Around the back are two rubber straps that kind of ruin the flow of this jet mode more than the blocky robot bits surrounding them do, but they serve a greater purpose later on. On the bright side, the back side of his head features one of two ports compatible with a flight stand, meaning once you fold up the landing gear, Jetfire is easily skyworthy. To begin Jetfire's transformation, we must engage in the egregious sin of parts forming, but my local priest says it's okay because it's only used for weapon storage, so that means I won't have to call for an exorcism this time. While at first the tabs may be a bit tricky to get undone, this transformation scheme mirrors the one seen on screen a lot better than one would expect, and certainly a lot better than the original Revenge of the Fallen leader class figure. On this version, the engines actually form the legs instead of hanging helplessly off his back, and while the head isn't made from the cockpit, it still comes from the same general area, and the nose of the Blackbird still performs something akin to that memorable cat arch motion seen in the film. Said nose can be a bit of a bitch to get into and out of the folded up torso mass during transformation at times, however. I absolutely love the touch of the revealed sculpted and painted engine detailing upon the removal of the nacelle. This is the exact opposite of faux parts. These are parts that you couldn't even see in vehicle mode but are exactly where they need to be to be accurate, and that level of detail really floors me sometimes. 
Of course, it's accurate to the robot model, but that just makes me appreciate this transformation even more. Oh god. I'm turning into the lazy eyebrow, aren't I? Behold, the glory of Jetfire! Unsurprisingly, Studio Series Jetfire delivers the most screen-accurate rendition of the geriatric Seeker's on-screen design to date. Jetfire is one of the more subdued character models from the Revenge of the Fallen film, and by that I mean the most humanoid, but taking one look at him tells you pretty much everything you need to know about the character. He's old, he's probably wise, and he probably takes no shit. A lot of this is communicated via the head sculpt, which features every wrinkle and crevice of his aged visage with rubber whiskers. The bright red eyes are hidden behind squinting silver lids, hinting at his weariness. The Blackbird cockpit skull cap is a nice touch, featuring a lot of the same tampographs as the actual alt mode piece, though I do wish there was an attempt to reconcile the two components. Jetfire's stature is pretty unique, as most hunchback Transformers tend to be evil Decepticon bruisers whose only character traits are violence and stupidity, but Jetfire uses it to come off as a stooped old man, helped along by his digitigrade legs. More likely than not, you're supposed to keep them bent deeply to enhance his vertebral deterioration, but stretching them out long and proud is a definite option. The withering arms and torso are crisscrossed with square miles of sculpted detailing, such as the various gears in Jetfire's crotch and the painted wiring in his biceps. Pretty much every part of his body is awash with silver paint somewhere or other, too, which gives Jetfire something of a premium feel to him. There's hardly a piece of him that I feel is too plain. This figure is also a master in kibble management, with the only errant pieces of Blackbird left hanging off of him are these panels on his back and his shoulders, which I take are meant to represent the spines on the character model. Compare that to the original Revenge of the Fallen leader, and Studio Series looks absolutely lean in comparison. I guess kibble is the price you pay for lights and sounds. Just like on the aforementioned Revenge of the Fallen figure, the landing gear was removed for transformation and is now able to be unfurled to form a cane, which Jetfire is able to use by pegging it into the palm of his hand. His other accessory is an axe with gleaming silver blades which Jetfire can hold normally. Unfortunately, Jetfire's fingers cannot close, so posing him with either or both of his accessories looks immensely awkward, as if they're glued to the insides of his hands. The 5mm ports used to hold the axe are also abnormally tight, meaning do not twist to pull the axe out from his hand. Both accessories can store on square pegs mounted on the insides of his back kibble, and the axe can store in vehicle mode by way of two rectangular slots on the underside of the rear of the jet. You know, for an old guy, Jetfire is actually pretty articulated. Starting at the head, his head can look up extremely far. That's mostly for transformation, but also because he's kind of hunchbacked, and that means he can look down a little bit too. Side-to-side -side motion is pretty limited, just because of the way things are jointed in here. Though you can get a nice tilt out of his head for him spying on the prune juice. The flaps here on the shoulders can move up and down, and they can move forward if you like. They can just get out of the way for what I'm about to show you. His shoulders move forward and backward on a swivel joint, and they can rotate 360 degrees right above the elbow. Elbow bends a little over 90 degrees. The wrists swivel 360 degrees, and they can curl. This is mostly for transformation, but it does mean you do have wrist movement, like up and down. Not side to side, you can turn it, but there's no real side to side motion unless you get the bicep swivel, in which case you can make him stroke his beard. The back spines can move outwards and inwards as you so desire. There's nothing at the torso because everything comes apart here, so there's really nothing they could have put inside his torso. The hips are on a ratchet that move backwards and forwards. They can actually move pretty far forwards. They can move outwards on a friction joint, uh, not very far. They, 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 things get bunched up back here and things clash into each other and it's just kind of a mess. The thighs have a swivel that could go all the way around if it weren't for these nacelle parts. The knees bend backwards and you can bend them they can straighten out like this and they just bend backwards. The ankles bend forwards and backwards, 
and there is an ankle pivot here. And at the toe, the toe can point forward and the heel can, you know, do a little bipod thing so that you can get him stable in more weird poses like this. Jetfire actually comes with one more accessory, a replacement chess piece for either number 32 or number 44 Optimus Prime, but only really necessary for the latter. This is to make the latter figure compatible for the combination seen in the climax of Revenge of the Fallen, and can be stored within Jetfire's torso when not in use. I actually advise to hold off putting this piece in place until later. To begin, a little preparation must be taken to get Optimus into position. Simply fold up his feet, fold down the outer layer of the backpack, and fold out two small tabs from behind the truck grill, and Optimus is set to combine. Much like in the film, Jetfire's transformation involves dismembering him piece by piece. The lower legs transform and swap around to become huge boots for Optimus Prime, and they tab into Prime's legs in three places each, ensuring a dead solid connection. The lower torso splits from the upper and contorts itself into a jetpack that slides onto Optimus's backpack and utilizes those tabs from behind the grill as locking points. This is the most fiddly piece to get on, but it's solid once you do. Those two rubber straps finally become relevant as they combine and tab into that new chest plate, assuming you're combining Jetfire with Studio Series number 44 Optimus. I recommend waiting to put on the new chest plate because the strap is, I find, somewhat tricky to put into place, and if you don't do this, the new chest plate will be a lot harder to get back out. After that, the Blackbird's nose splits to form Prime shoulder pads, which tab on top of his own, though on my copy, the right one doesn't like to hold itself up. I'll have to tighten the joint someday. Finally, Jetfire's upper torso configures itself into a massive fuck-huge cannon that Prime can hold. Let's roll. While not entirely screen accurate, this version of Jet Optimus is pretty sweet. It rides a fine line between bulky and powerful, and that effect is helped along by the fact that this Jetfire splits into various components instead of turning into a massive armature. I absolutely love the look of the massive Blackbird shoulder pads, even if mine suffer from gravity. The jetpack itself is actually somewhat understated, but it still makes its presence known and looks great in silhouette. I like how the engines themselves are on full display instead of being hidden by the nacelles. The chest plate is a bit too broad and thin for my liking. This is one of the few things that I feel was done better on the original Revenge of the Fallen duo, but on a mode this good, I can overlook it. The best part about this mode is the fact that, for the most part, Optimus Prime's articulation is unimpeded, and you can get some great dynamic poses out of him. Of course, options are limited when you bring in the massive cannon. While present in the movie, I'm not a big fan of this accessory, as it's more just a way to keep Jetfire's upper body from being left off to the side. But to me, that's just another good photo opportunity. As far as the Studio Series line is concerned, Jetfire is an unparalleled piece of engineering and design that looks both amazing in every single mode, and is a blast to get between said modes. It takes the original Revenge of the Fallen figure and shits on it in every way imaginable, showing it up over and over again. While it may be smaller and lack the electronic gimmicks of the original, Studio Series Jetfire exceeds his predecessor in so many other ways, at just $5 more than the original went for. Of course, the figure still has faults in kibble management, and many of the tabs can be more than a bit finicky, but I can overlook that as Studio Series Jetfire is the single greatest experience I've had with the line so far. Well, maybe outside of one exception. Studio Series Jetfire effortlessly gets the rank of Galactic. If you like this video or otherwise found it helpful or informative, then please subscribe for more reviews like this in the future. Thanks to everyone for getting me to 400 subscribers, and feel free to suggest topics for future reviews in the comments. When we return, it's time for yet another Studio Series Constructicon, but this time, a good friend of mine will be joining me on the show. This has been Kit Catastrophe. Transform and roll out.